Hi everyone, my name is Monique, and today I'm going to be showing you how to play a game that is currently on Kickstarter called Armello the Board Game, designed by Rob Heinsu and published by King of the Castle Games Company, who are helping sponsor this video. In this game, the King of Armello has become consumed by a mysterious illness called the Rot, and as one of four heroes, your goal is to complete quests, win battles, and earn prestige in order to become the new ruler. This game features deck building, area control, and action selection, and is based off of a popular video game by the same name. And so today, I'm going to be giving you a general overview of how the game is played, but please keep in mind that everything that you see here is considered a prototype copy of the game, and aesthetic changes will be made to the final production copy. For more information regarding the game, as well as the campaign, I've included a link to their Kickstarter in the description below. Last but not least, if you enjoy content like this and would like to see more in the future, please consider subscribing. And with that, we are ready to begin. So if you please direct your attention to the center of the table, we are all set up here for a three player game of Armello the board game. Welcome to the kingdom of Armello. Now, like I was mentioning earlier, in this game, you play as one of four different heroes. And so if you're familiar with the video game, then you'll probably be familiar with these characters. Here we have Thane, Sana, and Amber. Now, just to kind of give you the lay of the land, in the middle here, we have the main board that represents the Kingdom of Armello, which is actually split into six different regions, with the castle being in the very center. Each region is also divided into several individual tiles of different types of terrain. And so at the start of the game, each player will roll the region die, which will determine your starting location for your hero. Now, one thing that I should mention is that this prototype came with standees to represent the different heroes, but the final production of the game will come with miniatures. In addition, the final production copy will come with a 3D constructible castle to go in the center, as well as improvements to the dice as well as the cards. Now each player is given a player mat that represents the hero that they're controlling and also determines your starting and maximum health, as well as your starting amount of magic tokens. In addition, each hero has two separate decks of cards that are unique to their character. A starter deck, which you'll primarily be playing cards from, as well as an experience deck that contains stronger cards that you'll be adding to your deck by completing quests and winning battles. Lastly, each player starts the game with four gold coins as well as two Armello dice. Now in this game, your goal is to earn a certain amount of prestige points by completing quests, collecting spirit stones, and going into battle with other creatures. There are actually two different ways in which a player can win. The first way is as soon as a player reaches 30 prestige points, they may now enter the palace to attempt to slay the king for a regicide victory. Alternatively, the first player to reach 70 prestige points immediately wins the game via a proclamation victory. Now, if you're familiar with a video game, you'll probably recognize the cards that are in this game. However, this is a deck building game, which means each turn you'll play and draw cards from your own personal deck. And once you run out of cards, then you'll shuffle your discard pile and continue to play through your deck again. Over the course of the game, you'll also have the opportunity to acquire more cards. And so customizing which cards go into your deck will be an important aspect of gameplay. Now each round is played over the course of one day, starting at dawn, where you'll be resolving a series of steps, including passing the first player marker, activating guards, and gaining gold. But this is skipped during the first turn of the game. Then, starting with the first player and proceeding clockwise, each player will then take one day turn. Now on your turn, you'll always start by drawing cards from your deck until you reach your hand limit, which is indicated by your wits on your player mat, which in this case is five. Then you'll roll your two Armello dice and start taking actions. And in this game, there are three main things that you can do on your turn, and you can do them in any order. The first thing that you can do is you can spend your Armello dice in order to use a common power. Now there are six different symbols on these Armello dice, and each symbol corresponds with a different common power. These powers will allow you to do things like gaining one gold, or moving a guard or a bane, which are two different types of non-player characters in the game, to unoccupied tiles, gaining an additional movement, which we'll talk about later, drawing a card from your deck, or in the case of this die face, stealing a prestige from the player with the most and placing a peril token on the board. Alternatively, unspent Armello dice can be used to protect yourself against perils, which we'll talk about later, or they can be used in combination with action cards that you can play from your hand. 
Each hero's unique deck is comprised of two main types of cards. There are blue combat talents, which can be played during battle, and there are yellow action talents, which can be played on your turn. Now there are a wide variety of cards that you'll see throughout the game, and on your turn, you can play up to two yellow action cards from your hand, as well as any number of bonus action cards that are indicated by a lightning symbol. Some cards have special requirements that you'll need to meet in order to play them, and card effects will include things such as gaining resources or gaining additional movement, and cards that have a gold banner at the bottom allow you to spend a specific Armello die face in order to gain an additional benefit. Now at the end of each of your turns, you'll have the opportunity to purchase items and spell cards from the market to add to your deck. And these cards will come with a wide variety of much stronger effects than the cards that come in your starter deck. And finally, the third type of action that you can take on your turn is of course you can move around the board in order to complete quests and go into battle. Now each player starts the game with one quest card, and each quest requires players to travel to a specific terrain tile in a specific region on the board. Some quests, such as this one, show several regions, and in this case, you'll always travel to the region that is furthest away from your character. In this example, a meditative retreat wants me to travel to either the southwestern region or the northeastern region and go to specifically a mountainous terrain tile. Because my character is already in the southwestern region, then I must travel to the northeast in order to complete this quest. Now whenever you draw a new quest card, including during setup, you'll always place your quest marker in the targeted region so that all players around the table know which direction you're headed in. But they won't know the specific terrain tile that you'll need to travel to in order to complete the quest. Now if you're able to end your turn on that specific terrain tile as indicated by your quest, then you complete your quest and gain all of the rewards listed on the right hand side, which always include a certain amount of prestige points, a boost to one of your hero stats, two health tokens, and the ability to gain additional cards into your deck, either in the form of your experience cards, or cards from the reward deck, which include follower cards, treasure cards, and sometimes spirit stones, which we'll talk about later. And some cards will permanently gain you additional Armello dice to roll at the start of each of your turns. And once completed, quests will be added to your player map so that you can always keep track of what you've earned. So then, in order to complete your quest, you'll need to move around the map. And on your turn, you always start with three moves, though you may play additional cards from your hand that grant you additional moves. Now each time you spend a move, you'll move your hero to an adjacent tile and you'll resolve everything in that space. This will include fighting any creatures that are there, possibly encountering peril tokens, and resolving any terrain effects. Now in this example, I've moved Sana to an empty plane hex, and the plane terrain actually has no additional effect. In addition to the planes, other terrain types include the swamps, which require you to lose one health, there are stone circles, which gain you one health, there are forests that make it easier for you to attack adjacent creatures, as well as mountains that give you a defensive boost during battle, though they cost you two moves in order to enter their spaces. In addition, each region contains a settlement that allows you to place a control token on the space when entering, and each settlement that you control will gain you additional gold during the dawn phase. And lastly, each region contains a dungeon that you'll have to explore by rolling up to two exploration dice. Exploring these dungeons will either gain you rewards or force you to fight a dungeon bane, depending on the results of your die roll. In addition to the various types of terrain, other things that you'll encounter around the map include spirit stones that will sometimes appear in stone circles. When entering these spaces, players collect these spirit stones and will gain prestige points depending on how many they now have. You'll earn 7 prestige points for your second one, 8 for your third, and 15 prestige points for your fourth spirit stone. Spirit stones can also be gained by exploring dungeons and by acquiring them from the reward deck by completing quests. In addition, sometimes you may choose to enter a tile that contains a peril token. These tokens are resolved before the tile's terrain effect, and they require you to draw a card from the peril deck. Peril cards show one or more terrain types that will cause you to trigger the card's effect if you are currently on, or sometimes adjacent to, one of the listed terrain types, depending on what the icons show. If not, the card is simply discarded. But if the Peril card is triggered, then something bad will happen, unless you're able to make a save by discarding the required resources or specific Armello die face as indicated by the card. 
And the last thing that you can do while moving is if you ever enter a tile that contains another creature, then you go into battle. And this can be against other players or against guards or banes. In general, the way that battles are resolved is each player can play up to two combat cards from their hand, playing them face down and revealing them at the same time. Players will also roll a number of fight dice equal to their fight stat on their player mats, as well as any additional fight dice from combat cards. And if a player's total defense is less than the opponent's total attack, they lose health equal to the difference in values, which means both parties can lose health. And whoever loses less health is considered the victor, with ties broken in favor of the player who rolled more dice. And if you're battling an NPC, you'll draw a card from their deck, which will determine any actions as well as any effects that are triggered since they don't roll any dice. Now, if you lose all of your health tokens, unfortunately, you've been slain. The good thing is you are not eliminated from the game, but you do have to discard your entire hand as well as your current active quest. You'll also gain a wound card into your deck as well as a death token and lose prestige equal to however many death tokens you have in that moment. If you are the active player, the main part of your turn will immediately end, but you'll basically roll the region die and you'll get to regenerate on a new part of the board and draw a new quest card. Now, once the battle has been fully resolved, then players will consult a chart that will come with the game to determine how many prestige points each player will earn as well as experience tokens. This will be dependent on who their opponent was, whether or not they were slain, or if they had a bounty on them, which can be gained by fighting guards. Now, once you've finished all of your actions, then you end your turn by either completing a quest if you're able to, or by spending any experience tokens that you may have gained during battle in order to gain a card from your experience deck. At this point, you may also spend gold in order to purchase items from the market or a combination of gold and magic tokens in order to purchase spell cards. And once per turn, you may trash a card from your hand with a lower value than the card that you are buying to receive one gold discount. And finally, you can always end your turn by discarding as many cards from your hand as you'd like. Then play proceeds to the next player in clockwise order. Once all players have taken a day turn, then play proceeds to the dusk phase, where you'll resolve all of the steps on the dusk card. During this phase, if there are no spirit stones on the map, then you'll place one in a random region's stone circle. You'll also activate a random region's bane by drawing a card from their deck and resolving its effect. And all players will gain a number of magic tokens equal to their spirit stat. Then, starting with the first player, players will each take a night turn, taking actions as described. And starting in the second round, once all players have taken a night turn, then you'll resolve the steps on the dawn card, which will include passing the first player marker, activating a random guard this time by drawing a card from their deck, collecting income in the form of four gold plus one additional gold for each settlement that you control, and drawing a declaration card and resolving its effect. These cards have a wide variety of effects and will change each dawn. Now, as soon as a player reaches 30 prestige points, you'll replace the early declaration deck with the late deck that contains more extreme effects. In addition, all NPCs will become stronger and that player may now attempt to enter the palace and slay the king. At that point, you'll reveal the topmost palace peril card. And in order for the player to actually enter the palace, they'll need to make a save on that peril card. If successful, then they may now enter the palace and attempt to slay the king. But unlike other battles, in order for you to win via a regicide victory, you will need to slay the king without being slain yourself. In addition, any players who attempt to enter the palace in the future will need to draw an additional palace peril card. So there is an advantage to being the first person to enter the palace. Now, if this seems a bit difficult, the other option is to win the game via a proclamation victory by being the first player to earn 70 prestige points. Now, in playing with lower player counts, the game also comes with NPC card decks for each of the four heroes that you can incorporate. But that is generally how you play Armello the board game. Now, there are a wide variety of cards that the game comes with that I wasn't able to showcase, as well as some minor mechanics. And so for more information regarding the game, as as well as the campaign, I've included a link to their Kickstarter down below. If you have any questions about anything that you saw here today, please feel free to leave me a comment down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Otherwise, thank you all so much for watching the video. I really hope it was helpful. If you enjoy content like this and would like to see more in the future, please consider subscribing. Thank you. Bye.